everyone, my name is Jessie Jennings and welcome to Let's Paint Live, our monthly paint night where we teach you to paint a full painting in just about an hour. So tonight we are painting these really cute dried citrus ornaments. This is a super trendy theme for Christmas this year, all the dried fruits and cranberries and things like that to decorate your tree. So I'm going to show you how to paint them on our really cute um, and versatile little wood rounds here. We have Dylan here tonight moderating. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and Dylan will answer or he'll relay them to me live and I'm happy to answer them um, for you. And also we'd love to see your comments too. We'd love to hear where you're from and what you're doing, maybe what you're working on um, right now in your craft room. We'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, the supplies you'll need for tonight are our plaid four pack wood rounds. So this is a really awesome surface because it comes with four of them. So it's great for making coasters as you can see here. Um, but as you can see, you can also use them for ornaments. So just take a drill and drill a hole in there, a hand drill or an electric drill. Either way will work. Put some twine in and you have a really sweet Christmas ornament for your tree. Um, it's great for making gifts for people. You can do photo ornaments or you could do photo coasters. There's tons of ways to craft these. So we'll be using these tonight to make our Christmas ornaments. As always, we have our 24 piece Let's Paint Live kit. So we'll be using folk art paints tonight. And I'll go ahead and let you know the colors real quick. I'll just read them off to you. We've got aqua, white, linen, berry wine, classic green, pure orange, navy, and daffodil yellow. So if you have substitu substitutions for, for those, that's totally fine. As long as you have something similar, if you have questions for ways to mix those colors or ways um, or uh, different colors to substitute, just let us know and I'd be happy to answer those for you. We've also got our brush pack, our 10 piece variety set that comes in the kit. Some palette paper, uh, paper towels, and my water basin for cleaning my brushes. And I think that's it for supplies. Um, go ahead and let us know in the chat if you have any questions about supplies um, and Dylan will relay those to me. So we'll go ahead and get started with our painting. I'm gonna open my four piece ornament pack. And like I said, these are super paintable. They're really fun to craft because there's so many things you can do with them and they're really inexpensive. So I only need three. So I'm just gonna set these aside. And we might be switching around a little bit from ornament to ornament. So I'll kind of leave them in this order so you can tell exactly which um, one we're painting at any given time because you might like skip back and forth as things are drying. So to get started, we're gonna start on this um, big citrus ornament here, this big dried, uh, orange ornament, it's a tongue twister. And I'm gonna grab some of my linen and put that on my palette. So this is a very similar color to the color of the ornament already, but it's just gonna help us cover up some of these rings in the wood so that it's easier when we go to paint our orange. You can see it's re a really similar color to the wood itself. So I'm just gonna do a quick coat on here almost kind of like priming the ornament. We've got a handful of people joining us, Indiana and Missouri. Awesome. So we got a good spread so far. Welcome guys. How's the weather up there? I think it's getting pretty cold in the Midwest right now here. I hear there's a lot of snow going on. We're in Atlanta, so we've actually got kind of a, it was warm yesterday and then it was cold this morning. So we're all over the map. Okay, so you see how quick that was? I just did a coat of linen. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab some of my white. And oh, and you know what? We don't get this opportunity very often, but Jesse, I'm, I just got a text from our whole team and Pantone, the <gasps> color company that Ooh. you guys may know if you're in the art industry, just released 30 minutes ago the color of the year and Jesse and I were sitting here, didn't even think to look it up and it is Vivid or Viva Magenta. Oh. So it's I a love beautiful, that. Beautiful, bright magenta color. Sorry, we don't get like many hot news yeah. moments. <laughs> this so Justin. <laughs> this is a big one for us. That's awesome. Oh, I love pink. Magenta. I'm excited about that. It's surprising because 2018 was like a fuchsia. Mm -hmm. So it's relatively recent. Well, yeah, it was like purpley, but yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That's exciting. So, anyways, it's all coming through on our little group chat text right now. So. Very cool. Very cool. That's exciting. Um, okay. Well, back to our painting. I, <laughs> I kind of wish we were painting with magenta now. I'm like, what a missed opportunity. Um, but that's okay. Maybe maybe January we'll do some magenta. Um, okay, so I've got my coat of linen right here. I still have linen on my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and just add that on. And the reason I'm doing that is because this is going to kind of be that middle part of our citrus. And we don't want it to be like super bright white because it's a little off white if you look at a real dried orange. And so it'll kind of blend a little bit in with the linen we just put down and we'll get a nice off-white 
coat of paint, if that makes sense. So you kind of want to blend it in there while the linen is still wet. If your linen has already dried for whatever reason, because you know these wood rounds do dry super quick because they're so um, porous, then you can just mix a little bit of linen and white on your palette and go ahead and just put it on that way. That works too. That's very exciting about Pantone. We've got a group chat going between all the content creators and the social team here, um, all of the marketing people, and I guess everybody's pretty excited here at Plaid to hear that announcement about the Pantone color of the year. Okay, all right. So you can see here we have this nice off-white sort of base coat on our um, first wood round. And now we're gonna do the same thing for part of this wood round here. Because um, we're going to have our citrus sort of peeking in on that one. So we're going to do the exact same thing that we just did, but we're only going to do a little bit peeking in. And if it's not perfect, don't even worry, because you won't really see, especially the linen part, when we go to paint the rest. So we're just going to kind of do a edge of our circle here, kind of just peeking in. And we're just going right up to the edge. If you're wondering how to treat that, I just want to go up right up to where, like, the bark sort of starts, just right, you know, right beyond that, or right before that starts, I guess I should say. And pick up a little bit of white and blend that in there. Our um, social media manager uh, is texting right now, and she was saying that, I guess, in one of their announcements, they are calling it the Magentaverse that we're entering. Oh, interesting. Very spacey. Yes, very futuristic. Okay. All right, so now we're going to let those dry. Um, we're going to move on to some of this greenery here. Like I said, we're going to kind of be bouncing back and forth. If you've painted along with me for our December ornament Let's Paint Live, we kind of do this uh, pretty often if we're doing multiple ornaments. We're kind of bouncing around while things are drying. So um, I'll leave them here so you can really tell which ornament we're on at any given time, and hopefully it won't get confusing. But if it does, just, you know, holler in the comments, and we're happy to clear, th clear some things up. Okay. So now um, we're going to start by painting some of these, sorry, on this ornament, by painting some of these um, green leaves here. It's kind of like holly or kind of a mistletoe shape there. So I'm going to show you how I painted these. I'm going to grab some of my classic green. And some aqua. And I'm going to grab a small round brush. So this one here is a number six round. It doesn't have to be this exact brush, but something similar will work too, as long as it's a small round brush. I'm going to push these up a little. And I'm going to pick up some, well, let's actually, let's mix it on our palette a little first. That might make things easier. Pull this in. I'm going to mix one part classic green and one part aqua. So we have this like really pretty cool, I don't even know how to describe that, like tropical green almost, which I think is very pretty when you mix those two together. Um, so whenever I mix paint with my paintbrush, I always rinse it off before actually painting on my surface. And the reason I do that is because you don't want to have all of that paint in the bristles of your brush because it makes, your, um, makes it harder to control when you're putting it onto your palette or I'm sorry, onto your canvas or your ornament or whatever you have a deep painting. If you have all of that paint in there, it gets kind of moppy and it's hard, especially if you're gonna be painting fine lines or really specific shapes like this. You wanna make sure you start with a clean brush and then load it a little bit more um, intentionally. So now I'm gonna pick up some paint on here. You can see I've got some paint there, not too much. And I'm actually going to start by painting this upside down. And the reason I'm going to do that is because for me, it's easier to make these strokes by pulling downwards as opposed to pushing upwards. So I've got my brush here. I'm going to start here on the top with these little leaves. And we're going to be changing the pressures on our brush. 
we're going to get these fine lines and these thicker areas for the leaf um, with the same brush at, with one stroke just by changing the pressure. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to start on the left and I'm going to push down, pull down to the right and pull up. And that's how I'm going to get that shape there. This is sort of a variation of a comma stroke. If you guys are familiar with that style of painting, do the same thing on the right. I'm going to push down, go to the left and pull up. So those two meet in the center. And this is going to be the technique we're going to use for really all of these leaves, just kind of going in different directions where they meet in the center so you get that nice little stem of greenery. So I'm going to continue here. You can either add your thin stem in now or kind of go back and do that later. It's kind of up to you. Push down, oops, I'm add a little more paint. Push down, pull up. Push down, pull up. And then I'm going to start adding in some more greens. So to do that, we're going to do some mixing. I've got some navy blue here I'm going to add to my palette. And by adding aqua and navy blue to our classic green, we're just going to get different shades of that same uh, green color, so it'll be really pretty. So you can see here in the final we've got some darker leaves and some lighter leaves, and then our sort of our medium green leaves. And we did that by adding um, navy blue and aqua to our greens. It just gives it a little bit more variation, makes it look a little bit more realistic and dimensional. So now I'm just going to wipe some excess paint off my brush, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of navy blue on my brush. You don't want to have too much because it could go, you know, really very heavy navy really quickly. So you just want a little bit on your brush. I'm going to pick up a little more of my classic green and add that until you get kind of a color that you're, that you're liking. That one's good there, I like that. Now I'm going to go to the right. I'm going to press down, go to the left and pull up. You can see we have that nice darker green now. It's not dramatically darker, just a little bit darker, so it kind of feels a little more dimensional and more natural. Go over here, push down and pull up. And at any time, you can really go in and add your stem. Just make sure they kind of go straight down the middle, very lightly. I put very light pressure on my brush to get that stem. It's the exact same brush we've been using. Um, we're just changing the lines and the shapes we're getting by changing the pressure of our brush. So I'm going to do one a little bit further out maybe. So I'm going to push down and pull up and we'll attach him with another stem, putting very light pressure to get that very thin line. And now I'll go back and grab some more of the aqua color, make a couple more light leaves. Oh, we got Patrice Panuski in the chat. Oh, hello, that's my mom. <laughs> hey, mom. <laughs> So we'll do a couple more over here and then we'll do a couple kind of peeking in to make our ornament nice and full. Push down and pull up. And then push down and pull up. Okay. We'll do the same thing. We're going to have them kind of peeking in on either side. Like I said, just so we have a nice full composition. And when I say composition, what I mean is the way things are laid out and placed on our ornament. That's what the composition means. I'm going to go over here, I'm going to push down and pull up and go right off the edge as if there's another little bushel of mistletoe peeking in. Push down and pull up, pick up some green. Push down and pull up. And if your paint's drying as you're painting, since you're doing these um, very quick strokes, you want to just dip your brush in a little bit of water. You don't want to dilute your paint, just enough to kind of like keep it hydrated if it's drying quickly on your palette. So we're going to go over here on the left side, push down and pull up. Push down and pull up. And let us know guys if you guys are painting along with us tonight or if you're watching and you're going to paint later or if you're just watching for fun. We'd love to hear if you guys have already crafted ornaments for your tree this year. We'd love to hear if you're Mod Podging or painting or whatever it is you guys are doing, we'd love to hear about it. We'd love to hear what's happening in your craft room right now. Oops. Okay. All right, so I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. Kind of keep them in order so we don't 
we lose our place. And now you can see we've got some green on this one. So we're gonna go ahead and do that while it's fresh in our mind. We've got this nice, oops, we've got this nice um, fresh paint on our palette. We're gonna go ahead and turn it around and we're gonna paint this little uh, bushel of greenery popping up. So remember we painted this right here. That's where our orange is gonna be. And we're gonna push down, pull up, push down, pull up. Let us know if you guys have any of the ornaments we've done in the past. I think this is set number five that yeah, Jesse's done. Yeah, four or five, I think, for our Let's Paint Live series. And they've all been, not similar, but they all kind of have a, a vibe together. So it'd be yeah. kind of cool if you had a whole tree of them. Yeah, we try to mix it up each year so you can kind of get a, a different ornament experience each year, like limited edition. Okay, so we've got that little green bushel popping in. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush off well because we're done with the green. Make sure it's nice and clean. You don't wanna ever leave any acrylic paint in your brush because that's a really good way to ruin your nice brushes. If you keep them clean and take good care of these brushes, you can have them for a super, super long time. Okay, so I'll put this one back. And now we have, um, we can go ahead and start painting our citrus, which is really my, probably my favorite part of this whole um, painting of ornaments here that we're doing tonight. I think it's really fun. It's very loose, there's a lot of blending, which I think is fun, and a lot of little details, which I like. So we'll start with this big one here. And to start this orange, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna kind of sketch out, I always say this when I'm painting, sort of water our paint down a little bit and sort of sketch out just the wedges of our orange. So we're gonna hang on to the brush you've been using, the number six round. And I'm gonna turn my palette around here since I've since we're zoomed in a little, just to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna add some of my yellows and oranges to my palette. I'm just gonna turn it around so I got some more space. All right, so I'm gonna start by adding, like I said, yellow and orange. We've got pure orange here, which of course we're gonna be using to paint our orange. I've got some yellow for some of those lighter areas. We're also gonna be using some berry wine for those darker areas. That's gonna be some of here to make it look really dried and rustic. And then also a little bit of white. So if you already have white in your palette, um, great, but I'm going to add a little bit more because I'm going to use that for some of the details as well. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting a little bit of water on my brush and watering down my orange. There's a tiny bit that we're watering down, and the reason we're doing this is, like I said, we're going to kind of like sketch out our um, our little wedges here. This is also sometimes called an underpainting, so it's when you water down your paint and you sort of sketch out the composition of your paint so you know where things are going to be. And since you've watered it down, there's no texture to it. It's very easy to paint over and cover up. It just kind of gives you an idea of where things are gonna be placed in your final painting. So we're gonna leave some room for the rind of our orange. We're gonna start up here by painting just our little wedges. So we're gonna go just how you imagine it to be, a little triangle shape. And you don't want them to be perfect because if you look at a real orange, um, they're pretty wonky. They're very rarely like a perfectly uh, symmetrical, you know, circle. They're not, they don't look like a wheel. They look more um, natural and more organic than that. So we're gonna make ours a little bit wonky and that's hopefully gonna help them make more, make it look more realistic when we're done. So I'm just painting my, you can even put a dot where you want the center to be if that helps you. You can always just cover that back up later. Making my orange slices. Make some thinner, some thicker, so it looks more natural. Make the edges a little bit rounder. I'm gonna do a couple of small ones here. And that's what we're gonna, kind of the layout for how our orange is going to look. So now that I've done that, I'm going to um, pick up some just straight orange, not watered down, our pure orange, and I'm gonna paint in one of these wedges. And I'm kinda gonna go ahead and show you what we're gonna do for each wedge, because um, instead of kind of doing all the oranges and then all the yellow and then all of the you know uh, berry wine, we're gonna probably paint one wedge at a time. 
And the reason we're going to do that is because you want to paint wet on wet. And what that means is we're not going to let the coat beneath it dry before we start adding to it and blending and things like that. Because, like I said, we really want it to blend very well because we're going to be adding so many different colors in here. Um, so I'll kind of show you what I mean. That might have been confusing, but let me show you what I'm talking about. So I've got my wet orange on here now. So now I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow. I haven't cleaned my brush off. And I'm going to add some yellow to the bottom area towards the center. And I'm going to keep moving my brush up and down and blend that in. We're going to blend, 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 blend until you get that nice tangerine color. And I'm going to wipe off some excess. I'm not putting my brush in water. I just wiped off the excess of paper towel. And now I'm going to pick up a little bit of berry wine. And when I say a little, I mean a little, hardly any. That might even be too much. I just wipe some off. And we're going to do the same thing from the top. We're going to blend, 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 blend. And this is giving us that sort of like blood orange effect. Blend, blend, blend. I'm just keep moving my brush, pulling down, pulling down, pulling down because that orange beneath it is wet and we want it to blend with this berry wine so we get that very deep blood orange color. Blend, 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 blend. So now I've kind of got the top and the bottom. I'm gonna wipe my brush off, pick up some orange and blend the middle. We got kind of a gradient going now. We've got that beautiful gradient that you see in those dried oranges. There you go. So that, see how that was super simple. We have a beautiful gradient. And once you paint the whole thing, it'll be really pretty going in every direction. So I'm just going to keep doing the same thing. I'm going to keep trying my ornament. I'm going to start with my yellow, I mean, sorry, my orange. I promise I know my colors. And I'm kind of being a little bit loose. I don't want to say sloppy, but I'm being very quick and less careful than I normally would be because I want it to be very um, natural and organic looking. I don't want it to be perfect because that's not really how oranges look. I'm trying to make it very loose looking. And the more time I, more tension, the more time I spend on it, the more careful I'm going to be and the more perfect it's going to look. And that's not the look we're going for. So I'm going to grab my yellow and put my yellow in towards the bottom of my wedge. Blend, 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 blend. Wipe off my brush. Pick up a tiny bit of berry wine. Put it in the top of my wedge. Blend, blend, blend. Wipe off my brush, pick up some orange, and blend the middle. I'm going to keep on doing this same technique all the way around, the same series of colors for every wedge. Starting with my pure orange. How's everybody doing, Dylan? Do we have any questions or anything? We don't have a ton of questions. We've got the weather reports. Okay. <laughs> yep. Lay it on um, me. Let's see here. So we have, we've got, we've had someone since joined from Florida, so that's always good. It keeps okay. things a little bit warmer, but we had yeah. an icy cold in Manitoba, Canada. Oh gosh, I bet it's freezing. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, what else we got here? Florida windy, got very windy. I'm not sure where that one was coming from, but yeah, I mean, we've gotten super cold in the last few weeks. We've had kind of traditional seasons in Atlanta this year. Yeah, we have. A true fall and a true winter. Mm-hmm. Usually it doesn't get super cold here until like at least February, but it has been pretty chilly. If you feel like one of your colors um, maybe you used too much of and it kind of started to outweigh the other colors, feel free to just, you know, add one of the other colors back in. Just then I think felt like I had a little too much of the orange at the end to blend the two colors together. So I went back and added a little bit more berry wine just to make sure that that color was represented. Got any fun plans for the weekend, Dylan? Well, I am hosting a Christmas party that, that um, a lot of our team is invited to, so I have a lot of decorating to do. Oh, okay. okay. You're already getting it started. You must have a lot. I have a ton. I have to build a mantle. Oh. <laughs> so 
from my house doesn't That's have a mantle, a so I have a piece sitting right behind me right now that uh, I'm going to have to turn into an old piece of furniture from something we threw away here uh, that I'm going to transform into a mantle. So we've got, I can't wait. We've got so a lot to do. super fun. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that um, brief or suitcase painting trend like old suitcases painted with like Christmas phrases on them. Oh my gosh, how cute. Um, with our folk art home decor chalks. So. I can't wait to see that. Yeah. I'm excited for the party. I am going to teach my niece's Girl Scout troop on Sunday how to paint so they can get their painting badge. Oh, that's really cool. Isn't that fun? We didn't talk about that. So um, where is that going to be? It's going to be at like a local... Uh, like, like multi-purpose center, yeah, that uh -huh. they've uh, reserved for the class. So they have to do um, paint a do a painting class, okay. paint a painting, and they have to um, do one painting that's the painting of a mood. So we're gonna play music, and you have to paint what you feel. Okay. And then we're well, that'll be interesting. <laughs> and they're what seven? Eight? They're eight. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Save for reference. Oh gosh. It's gonna be a lot of what, what was that Pixar movie? The, oh my gosh. Um, Inside the, Out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of that happening. Yes. Um, but the main part of the class is going to be a painting, and they want to use a lot of found objects from home. So we'll be using some okay. corrugated cardboard and toothbrushes and bubble wrap to paint a really pretty um, uh, landscape. Okay, that's really cool. So Emma and I will be doing that on Sunday with the Girl Scout troop. <laughs> that's actually really cool. Yeah, it'll be fun. We've been looking forward to it. So we're still going with our wedges. Finishing up. Just got a few more to go. Also, if you guys follow, you know, all of our social media and not just our Facebook here or our YouTube, um, you would know that we have a great series called um, Make It Festive with Walmart right now. Mm -hmm. And Jesse is actually teaching an episode that comes out tomorrow. So you'll want to take a look at our um, YouTube channel and our Facebook around mid-afternoon tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And you'll see Jesse's episode. She shows you how to make these great um Get velvet candlesticks and do a faux velvet painting technique. Yeah, it was actually, um, if you know Sherry here at Plaid, Sherry Ragsdale, she's our resident carpenter and crafter and she does all the things. It was her technique, so I got the opportunity to teach it to you guys and I make it with Walmart series, so make sure you check that out. All right, I'm gonna finish up these two last two quick. Let us know if you guys have seen um, the citrus trend as much as we have, because mm -hmm. Jesse picked this because everything we've seen this year involves dried oranges yep. for Christmas decorations, which I think has always been a constant, but it's heavy yeah. this year. It's like very old fashioned in a way, right. and then now of course it's been made modern because that's just kind of the way trends go. And it's very novel. Yes, it is. I've seen lots of people, lots of my Instagram friends and their stories drying out oranges this year for their trees and their wreaths and whatnot. So. so it'd be really cool if you take some dried orange slices and like mix them with these ornaments yeah. or like little pieces. You've got a little piece of evergreen on there. Mm -hmm. Just sort of embellish. That'd be pretty. We've got a really cute project coming out too that Tanisha here did. You probably know her from Craft Breaks and <clears throat> she does a lot of Amazon Lives here. She's also does a lot of Drizzle with Dylan. Um, she made a really cute little mason jar craft with gnomes and dried oranges. So mm -hmm. keep an eye out on our social media for that coming up too. That'll be posted here in the next couple weeks. And she filled those with dried oranges, like a little potpourri gift, which I thought was cute. Mm -hmm. Okay, our last slice. Last wedge, I should say. Okay, guys, so now that we've got that done, <laughs> we do need to move on to our next one. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> okay, so now we're all experts at painting those. We have that really beautiful um, blood orange effect there. It's very dramatic looking. Now that we're pros with that, we're gonna go ahead and do it again real quick. I'm just gonna do three wedges here, so it's a little bit faster. You can go ahead and do the layout if you need to. 
As you're doing that, we had a good question pop up um, okay. from Julie. They said, can these paints be used on metal? That's what I paint on most. Um, and that's a great um, question. I think uh, the best formula to paint on metal that we have here at Plaid is Folk Art Multi-Surface. Yep. Um, it has a bonding sealer in it that helps it adhere to those slicker surfaces. And um, I suppose if you had like a really, really rough older corrugated metal you could use our mat but the best option would be to go with that multi-surface and you get a cool satin sheen uh, a lot of the colors are the same between the lines so you can find mm -hmm. your favorite colors in the multi-surface formula i agree with dylan um, another benefit of using multi-surface is that it is dishwasher and outdoor safe so should you paint a lot of metal if you end up putting some of those metal pieces outside um, if there are like outdoor artwork, then you can still use the multi-surface because it will be safe outdoors, which is right. nice. It won't wash off and get an age over time. And then we had a question about when the Walmart episode will be released, I think, and that should be around 3 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Okay. And as Jesse's doing that, I want to say, you know, uh, we had some kind of excitement about the Girl Scouts in here. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have a Girl Scout troop, you know, or if you have nieces and nephews or grandkids or your own kids, they, we also have a great series on YouTube um, called Let's Paint Art Lessons. Which, That's what I thought you were going to talk about earlier when yeah. you mentioned Walmart. So um, you can find that in our Let's Paint playlist here on YouTube or on our Facebook um, playlist, depending on where you're watching us. And that is a great collection of five episodes. We're about to add an additional seasonal one, so you want to tune in for that. But there's a fantastic kit, just like the Let's Paint Live kit, but it's with Apple Barrel acrylic paint. It comes with Mod Podge and brushes, so it's kind of a similar vibe, but it's geared towards the younger audience. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a lot more family friendly, so you'll want to check those um, episodes out. Also, gift giving. It's um, not too late. I think our last ship date for holiday sales to get it by Christmas is December 9th. So make sure that you're, pay you're getting your kits from plaidonline.com, the mm -hmm. Let's Paint Live kit or the Apple Barrel Art Lessons kit by then. So basically by the end of next week and we can get that to you by the, um, the Christmas holiday. Yeah, definitely. Like you said, it's a great gift if you know any you know middle school-ish aged kids. Um, it's an awesome gift just if they're crafters, but just like our Let's Paint Live series and our Let's Paint Live program, um, it comes with all free tutorials. So there's tons of educational content, there's downloadables, there's practice sheets, um, there's things to read about and learn that go with the kit, and that's all free on YouTube. So make sure um, to check that out. It's a really, really awesome and valuable gift to give to you know the middle schoolers in your life if they're into art and into learning about that kind of thing. Um, okay guys, so we're finally finished painting the wedges. I know that was a little bit tedious. Um, we just have a couple more details to add to our wedges here before we move on. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna paint the uh, rind. So we'll do that by mixing some of our pure orange here with our daffodil yellow. So I did about a one to one ratio. I just put my brush in a little bit of water because it's a little bit dry here. And so my, my uh, paint is wanting to dry on my palette. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to go right up to the edge there. I'm gonna go kind of leave some of the white because that's how it would look um, on a real orange, but I don't wanna cover up the bark. So I'm gonna kind of go right in the middle there and I'm gonna paint that rind all the way around the edges. And I'm not gonna make it perfect because it wouldn't look perfect on an orange. I keep saying that, but it would be nice and organic and natural looking. So do some thinner areas and some thicker areas to make it look a little bit more realistic and rustic. And if you're just tuning in, uh, we did talk a little bit earlier, we're not using it in this particular painting, but Pantone released their color of the year for 2023, and it is called Viva Magenta. And uh, we are currently in a group text with our whole team, mm -hmm. and the face-off is happening. We had a <laughs> lot of people guessing the colors. Um, it's a great thing. You know, Plaid is really good at aligning ourselves with Pantone, and we try and keep up with Pantone and create content with those colors of the year. Um, to stay trending and we will be doing that again so pay attention to our socials and we'll tell you the color that in all of our paint lines that match the best 
mm -hmm. um, for that new color if you want to use it as well. So it's a really pretty magenta color. Definitely. Okay, so I went ahead and I painted those, um, the orange skins in. And now I want to go ahead and I want to soften these a little bit. So you can see they're super stark, which I do like. They're super stark against that white background that we did. Um, but I want to soften them just a tiny little bit. And to do that, we're going to do sort of uh, a wash of color, kind of. But we're going to use that to soften the edges. So I like this color we just mixed here. It was one part uh, pure orange and one part daffodil yellow. But I'm going to water it down some. So I get kind of like an inky consistency. We have this pretty tangerine color and I've watered it down so it looks something like that. You can see there, that's kind of how it should look, maybe a little bit more water. We want it to be pretty thin, like kind of watercolory. And with this, I'm going to go and I'm going to paint right on the edges of each of these wedges. And what that's going to do is it's going to soften that, you can see there. It's not quite so stark, it's kind of like a mid-tone between the um, you know, reddish orange wedge and that white background. So it's not going to be quite such a harsh edge. And I'm just going right on that line. So it goes on the wedge and the middle piece. I wish I knew what the white part of the orange was called. Do you know, Dylan? The pith. <laughs> Is that real? Yeah. <laughs> Dylan always knows. Why do you always know that? The pith. He knows a lot about fruit and uh, vegetation. Rocks. Don't and rocks that. as well, true. Yeah. Rocks and stones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true. He's very a uh, nature-loving kind of guy, I guess. Granola. Very granola-y, <laughs> yeah. He loves a good hike. Uh, now, we have a good comment here on YouTube saying, um, these are really beautiful. You make it look so easy to do. And that is true. Jesse is really good <laughs> at painting. But Let's Paint Live is all about inclusivity and teaching every skill level. Mm -hmm. And this project may look kind of, you know, uh, daunting, but, you know, and you may be watching this for entertainment, but you can go back and Jesse's really given you all the tools you need to learn how to do this painting. And if you watch it, it it's okay if you watch it over a few times. This will be on both of these uh, platforms for you to go back and rewatch immediately right after we're done with this live. And you, with a little bit of practice, your projects will come out exactly like this. I think you'd be surprised how well, if you just kind of follow along and use some of the tips that I've given you, I think you'll be surprised how good it will look. People always are like, oh, I can't paint. I've never done that before. There's no way. But if you just, you know, kind of go step by step and take your time, like I said, I think you'll be surprised at the result. I think it'll come out a lot better than you think it's going to. All right, so we got our oranges done here, guys. I think they look beautiful. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, let's add a little bit of white in there. I'm going to use the same brush. I cleaned it off. I'm going to water down some white. We're going to do these lines in here that kind of give you that, like, um, like that, like, veiny look. I don't know if that's the right word. That is in the citrus, part, like, the fruit part of the citrus. So, like, I'm going to water down this white a lot. I don't want it to be very thick at all because I want it to be super um, transparent when we go to paint those little lines. So you can see, you can, can't even see, barely see the uh, paint in my brush because it's so watered down. So we're going to do tiny little squiggly lines in the middle there. Gives it some texture. And it's all these little details that will really help to make it look real. The more details you add, I think that really is always kind of the way it goes. The more details you add, the more realistic it's always going to look. Just when you think you've added enough detail, just add a couple more and that really will um, go a long way in making whatever you're painting look more realistic. I'm being super loose, not a lot of rhyme or reason, just painting those little squiggles to give it a little bit more detail. And the same thing for our part of an orange on our other one. All right, isn't that pretty? And it was really quick and simple to do. Not, uh, not very complicated at all. All right guys, so for the last part of this um, rustic dried orange tutorial, we are going to paint our cranberries. So you can see here, these are, I guess, more holly berries in the mistletoe, right? Is that what you call them? Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, well, hey, I nature think mistletoe guys, has <laughs> its own berries, yeah. So whatever the mistletoe berries are called, we'll be doing those, but also do a strand of cranberries too. Because when I think of dried oranges on a Christmas tree, I also think of strands of cranberries. So we're going to start with these ones here. 
Um, and we've got our berry wine. So I'm going to grab a little berry wine on my brush. I'm still using the same brush. And we're going to paint the circle um, by hand. So a lot of times people are a little bit intimidated um, by painting circles, you know, just without tracing or without using something as a stamp or things like that. So I'll show you how we're going to go ahead and paint those. I'll move this up and we'll do a couple practice uh, circles on our palette paper. So using the very tip of my brush, I'm going to pull to the left and pull to the right. Pull to the left, pull to the right, pull to the left, pull to the right. And the more you do that, the better you'll get. It'll become muscle memory. So pull to the left, pull to the right. And I almost feel that if you kind of have it symmetrical, it's always going to look good, even if it's not a perfect circle. That's kind of my opinion. So as long as your left and right are the same, you should be good to go. Pull to the left, pull to the right, pull to the left, pull to the right. So I would recommend doing several of those on a separate sheet of paper or on your palette paper if that's what you're using and kind of practice that. And like I said, it'll become muscle memory and it'll be much easier to do when you go to paint them on your ornaments. So we're gonna kind of scatter these amongst our leaves, left and right, left and right. You can do as many or as few as you'd like. And I'm gonna overlap the leaves in some areas We're going to go back and fill them in. Also, if you feel like you want to cheat a little bit um, or use a different tool, you can also use a pencil eraser. That'll be just the right size for these berries. I'm just going to fill them in with my brush. I'm just kind of doing a dabbing motion to fill in those small berries. I want to remind everybody that Jesse's using the Let's Paint Live kit which is a great selection of colors and brushes that you can find linked here on this post uh, in the video description. And believe it or not, that one kit has been used to create over a hundred different paintings over yep. the last few years. So there's a library of tutorials for all kinds of subject matter, different skill levels. And this is, again, the fourth or fifth year that we've done ornaments similar to this. Um, so there's seasonal content. There's so much content here on YouTube and Facebook for you to go back and look, look at yeah. and learn from. Definitely. All right, guys. So now we've got our berries painted in. We're going to add a little bit of white to those while they're still wet. So same brush. I haven't even cleaned it yet. I'm going to pick up a teensy tiny bit of white. Can you see? Just the tiniest little bit. And we're going to go ahead and start dabbing some white onto those berries. And you want it to blend with the berry wine so that you get kind of that pinky frosted look. Dab, dab, dab. I'm kind of just focusing on the bottom parts, kind of like a highlight almost. I'm just dabbing the white in there. The tiniest little bit, hardly any. If you put too much white, go ahead back with some berry wine and that'll help bring back that beautiful burgundy color. Just dabbing it in, like I said, you know those like frosted cranberries you see this time of year, like on a, a sugar coated on the pies and things like that. I just think it's so beautiful. That's kind of the look we're going for. Just dabbing that white in. Okay, you can go back and blend a little too if you need it. Kind of similar to the way we did our wedges in the beginning. Isn't that pretty? We have those pretty frosted berries now. Okay, so it's going to be a really similar technique for our strand of cranberries. I am, so we get that nice, you know, sort of strand look. I am going to go ahead and paint in a line um, that will follow with our circles. So I'm going to water down a little bit of this burgundy color, our berry wine. And I'm going to paint kind of matching our um, orange wedge shape here. We're going to do a line going that way. And if it's not perfect, that's okay because we're going to cover it up with our cranberries just, just to give us an idea of where it's going to be. So we're going to do the same thing, our left and right technique. So left and right. And we're going to use that line as our center for our berries. Left and right. And right. I'm 
making them as uniform as we can. If they're not perfect, that's okay, because cranberries aren't really perfect. They're all different because they're natural, just like our orange wedges. Now we're gonna go back and fill them in. And we're coming up on the end. Dylan, if you wanna grab our January Let's Paint Live. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so now we're gonna go, we're gonna add some um, darks and some lights. So to add dark to our um, cranberries here, if you look at the palette that I kind of read out in the beginning, the darkest color we have is our navy. So that is what we're gonna be using for our cranberries. Thank you. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of navy. You can see that a little bit goes a long way, so you don't wanna have too much, just like when we were using navy for our greens. It's a very strong color. And I'm gonna do some dabbing for the dark areas. So I'm just gonna do it with the top. Dab, 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 dab. Gonna kind of pretend where the light source is, kind of, I guess kind of the citrus is a light source here. That's what I'm going for apparently. Dab, 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 to add in those darker areas. I'll hold it up so you can see a little better. Oops, dab, dab, dab. And a little trick too, guys, if you accidentally painted an area um, that you didn't mean to, and of course we didn't base coat these, we're just using that raw wood as our background, just grab a little sandpaper. When it's all dry, just take a little sandpaper, and just sand that one little area and it'll completely go away. It'll act like an eraser and you'll never see it. You, know, you don't have to stress about it. Sometimes it's a little intimidating painting on um, you know, an unpainted surface because there's not a lot of room for error, but in this case there really is because you can just sand it away. Now I'm gonna pick up some of my white, just a tiny little bit, and we're gonna dab a little bit of white on the opposite side of where we put our navy. And that's gonna be a little highlight. All right, and that, guys, is our trio of citrus ornaments tonight. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, like I always say, this is one of my favorite paint nights of the year because you get to paint ornaments. Um, I love the pumpkins and I love the, the ornaments and all the really festive ones uh, during the year. So I hope you guys had fun with me. It was a little bit different. We got to use one of our plaid surfaces, which was fun. Um, once you're done, you can add a little wood bead and maybe a little greenery to add it to your tree. Um, make sure to tune in for our next month's Let's Paint Live, which again is the first Thursday of every month. So it's the first Thursday of January. It's gonna be Emma here painting along with you and you're gonna be painting this really cute little uh, wintry snowy village here. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. It kind of reminds me of a Christmas card, but um, it's really fun for winter. We've got some treasure gold and some glitter going on there, which is always a lot of fun when you um, add those to your Let's Paint Live painting. So again, it'll be Emma. It'll be the first Thursday of January at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time.